Hey everyone, this is Alan from Game Grooves, and I'm going to be talking today about the history of Game Grooves. So first of all, bear with me because I'm getting over a cold and my voice is a little weird, but I'm going to do the best that I can. Uh, the reason I feel compelled to talk about the history of Game Grooves is because um, as of, I guess, a week or two ago, I've been creating content for the VGM community for seven years. And it's been a fun seven years, but it doesn't seem like it's been that long. So I wanted to take a moment and reflect on how did how did I get here? You know, a lot of people might be curious, well, how do you get into this game groups, right? I can certainly say that it wasn't my intent from the start to create a video game music community. Um, initially, uh, game groups sort of started as Game Lark. Now, you all might, some of you all might be familiar with that community, um, and Game Lark is and was very similar to Game Grooves. Um, essentially, it was, you know, as I, I, I kind of mentioned this on a podcast with Adrian has issues. I talked a little bit about the the genesis of Game Lark, and it's important to, to know Game Lark to know Game Grooves because Game Lark, in many ways, was the predecessor to Game Grooves. Um, and it's its own separate community run by Ro Panaganti, just for anyone that wants to know. But a lot of the ideas from Game Lark came into Game Grooves, right? So Game Grooves would not have existed without Game Lark. And anyways, at any rate, um, I had, I don't know, I had been like just tossing different uh, ideas around my head for a long time trying to create some kind of online community. And I, and I had all kinds of crazy ideas uh, not necessarily related to video games or music or anything like that, but ultimately uh, they they didn't pan out for one reason or another. And I kind of was at a point where I was like, ah, I don't know what I'm going to do. But one day um, I just had this idea, you know, I, I was working a, a kind of very monotonous, very repetitive, very boring job for my day job. And so I would listen to video game music soundtracks to keep me entertained at work, basically to keep me keep my mind off how boring it was um and so i thought well you know there's a lot of people that create covers of video game music and i don't know if anyone's like gone through the trouble of creating playlists for these specific like franchises and so my initial idea was just to create a bunch of playlists for different video games um and actually i shared a, a video on Twitter, which was my very first channel introduction, and it was me saying, you know, this is Game Lark. Um, you can come here to find playlists, and I hope to create original content in the future. I had no idea what I was going to do because, you know, initially I actually considered creating a channel and then at, uh, where I would like post other people's music with their permission, of course, basically trying to create like a video game music hub. Uh, but of course, no one really wanted to do that with a brand new channel. I, I reached out to a couple artists and they're very polite, but they all basically say the same thing, which is no. And so I thought, well, if I can't host the, you know, videos on a channel, well, I can at least create playlists, right? So that's what I did. And then um, I don't really remember how I came to this idea, but I decided to start interviewing people. So I... Um, I reached out to a friend of mine, actually. Uh, this interview is no longer up because they don't do video game music anymore and they asked me to remove the interview, but I interviewed somebody that I knew prior to creating Game Lark. Um, and that was my very first interview. And then I, it just kind of snowballed from there. And I started interviewing people. Um, I started meeting people within the community. And um, there's, there's all these like milestones, right? When it comes to how to, how to game groups come to be, right? I can think of several moments in my life where there was like a major turning point or important point where it's like, okay, I got further into the video game music community. One of the, one of those milestone moments for me was meeting Ro Panagansi or talking with Ro Panagansi. Um, I, I had a little like celebrity moment. I remember uh, because of that, because I think Ro reached out to me because of Eric Esparza, aka Project Genesis. He shared something that I had posted um, from GameLark. Ro reached out to me about doing an interview for something, and I don't even remember what. But I knew Ro from multiplayer, the first multiplayer charity album, um, because I was a fan of 
Jam 2995. <clears throat> and I remember Jam was on that album and promoted it. And I kind of, I guess I must have known Roe from that. But either way, um, it was it, it was like one of these like, oh my goodness, I'm meeting somebody I like that's famous in this community. And I was like telling my wife about this and she's just rolling her eyes like, you're such a nerd. But anyways, um, so meeting Roe was really important because, you know, once I met Ro, he kind of showed me the ropes and, and was super instrumental for everything that followed. Um, and specifically the, the game Lark Records, right? So after I created some interviews, I started creating like, uh, I don't know, just like trivia videos, you know, Game, game Lark Asks, where I would, would compile answers from video game music um, cover artists about certain topics right you can all look you can look at all these videos on the game lark youtube channel they're all still there um created some youtube poop edits that i'm very proud of <laughs> one of ro panaganti cooking uh it's called cooking with swigs i think it's amazing i still i watch that like at least once a month it's still amazing anyways um what eventually where it eventually went with game lark was i i wanted to I, I was a little sad every time I did an interview because I was getting to know all these cool people, but I wanted to work with them, right? And then it was like, well, I'm doing an interview, but then they're going off and doing their own thing, and I'm going off and doing my own thing, and I was like, I want to be more involved. So I thought, well, what about a record label? What if we start putting together, you know, compilation albums? And these, were, this was nothing new, right? I mean, you've had OCR doing this for years. Um, I decided to create game mark records and we worked on our first album which was called volume one and i reached out to several artists that i had met through interviews um and put together this album and ironically uh this album still has never been released on major stores for any length of time because there was copyright issues with one of the tracks and i still don't know why there was because there was an official release but who knows so anyways for our first album <laughs> was not able to be released which i wasn't deterred we started working on a second one after I just kind of gave up and I was like, all right, I tried to license this two or three times. It just wasn't working. Um, our second album really did well, which was called Supersonic. Um, I don't know if you all have heard it. It's a really good album. I'm, I'm proud of everything that, that Game Lark put out and that one especially. Uh, we got picked up by a Sonic fan channel called, I think it's called Tails Channel or something like that. Forgive me if I'm getting the name wrong. It's been a long time. But either way, we were picked up by several Sonic fan sites and communities. And that album did really well. Um, and so we did a couple other albums after that. We partnered with Materia for uh, Versus, which was a fighting game album. And then we did uh, Mog's Mixtape. And Mog's Mixtape was another milestone moment. Um, and it was, it was kind of bittersweet because... I was really proud of Mog's mixtape, and it was it was a double album, two discs, you know, lots of music. Final Fantasy. the The idea was that we would take uh, tracks from all of the major titles into one album, and you know, I was really kind of going for broke. Um, what, Supersonic did well, but Versus wasn't performing quite as well, um, and so. I was hoping to like, I don't know what I was expecting. I guess I was just trying to, to break even sooner than I should have. And so I, I basically spent too much money on that album, on the on the marketing especially. I was, you know, buying Facebook ads and Twitter ads. <laughs> I have no idea why. Might as well just throw money down the drain. But either way, um, <clears throat> that, was, that was kind of privately, just in my own mind, I thought, well, this is the album that's either make or break. Like if we don't, if we don't do really well with this, I'm going to have to step aside because these albums are just costing too much. Um, and so, unfortunately, uh, I did step away from Game Lark for quite some time because uh, a lot of reasons. One, I was funding all this out of pocket and um, I just wasn't being smart about how I was funding albums. Two, I had a, a, a child on the way, my son. This is 2016, so the, the, the fall slash winter of 2016, I stepped away, um, and Ro and some other people took over, and um, 
yeah, it was hard. It was hard stepping away from something that I created, something that I loved, but I just couldn't do it anymore. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't afford to keep producing these albums, you know, funding them entirely. And I was especially worried, you know, having a kid on the way. I had no idea how much that was going to cost. Now I know. So it was a lot. <laughs> Spoilers. Kids are not cheap. Um, so I stepped away and the next couple years, whatever, I, it's hard to explain. I was, I think I came back two or three times. I, I would, I would come, I would go away for a while and then I would miss it and I would come back. Um, and I, and I just felt bad after, after doing that a couple times. I, I, I didn't want to, it was because I realized like I, 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 um, I just hadn't figured out how, how to make this work, right? I, I, I couldn't figure out how to make this concept work of, you know, a very niche video game music label <laughs> for covers. <laughs> I mean, you're talking about super niche. Um, one thing I did do is, is you know, um, let's see. So I, I kind of brokered a partnership with Materia... Um, so that they would, so it could reduce upfront costs for GameLark. Uh, however, you know, after last year, um, Game Groups went independent for their latest album, or GameLark went independent. <laughs> See, I'm mixing them up. GameLark's latest album, which was a po which was a Pokemon tribute album, was released independently of Materia because of everything that happened last year. So they are no longer associated for anyone that wants to know. Um, GameLark is its own separate entity, just like Game Gruz is its own separate entity. And I basically just realized, okay, I need to step away from this because I keep going back and then I realize, like, you know, uh, it, it's, it just got messy. It was kind of like a relationship that you needed to just end and, 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 and be friends. Like, we needed that be friends stage where GameLark was doing its own thing and anything I wanted to do with the video game music community needed to be something new, right? So... I, this is another milestone moment and very, very random, very strange, very fortuitous. I was on a work trip and I believe it was somewhere in te Texas, maybe Austin. And I was getting, I was boarding a plane. It was like one or two in the morning and I was getting out of a taxi and I saw this guy with a, he is legend hoodie. Uh, he is legend is like a, I don't know, rock, hardcore, whatever. They're kind of metal, kind of hardcore band from North Carolina, and um, I just said to the guy, like, hey, nice sweatshirt, I, li I like those guys. He's like, really, yeah? He he's like, oh, cool, I, I, I mastered their last album. I was like, what? So it turned out that this guy was a producer. He was a music producer. He had his own studio. He and I started chatting, you know, on our way to the terminal, and, um, you know, it was just such a random chance meeting, and I told him a little bit about Game Mark and how you know, I missed it and I, I really liked doing it, but it just wasn't working. He's like, well, I hope you figure it out, man. Cause it sounds like you sounds like really cool. And sounds like you, you really have a passion for it. So I don't know when that was maybe 2018, maybe end of 2018, 2019, either way, I think it might've been 2019 then. Cause, uh, I had, I had not only one child, I had two child children at this point and my son and my daughter, but I was like, well, there's got to be a way to do this. There's got to be a way for me to um, to continue being in the video, VGM community without it being super expensive. Um, let me go back a little bit, though, because I kind of glossed over another milestone moment, which was my first MAGFest. Um, and that was when I truly fell in love with the video game music community for so many reasons. Um, I, remember, I remember walking into the Gaylord for the very first time for my very first MAGFest and just being overwhelmed by how accepting and fun it was. Like everyone could be themselves. It felt like being a kid again, it really did. And I know that's such a cliche, but to me, like it's not immature to want to have the heart of a child. I think that that is like the hardest thing is to have that enthusiasm, that joy for life, that outlook of like everything's new and exciting because you, you get old and you get cynical and you're like, uh, oh, everything's going to be the same way it was, but it's, it's not, you know, life is all about change, right? And it's only when we embrace it and we look forward to change that we can be the best people that we can be. So anyways, MAGFest was when I really truly felt like super hard in love with the VGM community. Um, so back to what I was saying about, uh, GameLark, 
I, I, I thought about it and I was like, well, you know, one of the reasons that Game Lark didn't succeed, in my opinion, was it was super hard to market these albums, right? I mean, for, for some of these albums, I would spend upwards of like, 20 20 to 30 hours like cold calling fan sites basically messaging forums and fan sites about especially for final fantasy oh check out our album and i would hear back from maybe two or three so like 50 to 100 websites i'd hear back from two or three um and i just thought well part of the problem is that i'm completely reliant on social media for marketing right in other words when i put out an album the only way that people are going to know about it is if they see a, like a tweet or a retweet or something like that. There's not a hub. I haven't created a, a place where people go to find video game music. Um, and in the beginning, uh, that was what GameLark was, at least on the YouTube channel. But over time, it really just became the, the record label. So my idea was, well, what if I created a website? Um, well, I had already created a website. Let me be clear. I already had the GameLark Gazette which I was doing for a while, but then I stepped away from. So I talked with Ro and I said, what if, what if we started doing this again? You know, I, I missed that. I could do that. I could create like a, a hub and then it would be win-win. Um, so I started posting content to Game Lark Gazette again in 2019, I believe. And then we kind of just realized over time that the brands needed to be separate, right? The website and Game Lark were on two different paths. So it was a very amicable split. We just said, well, let's call this website something different right that became game grooves so game grooves really became its own thing as a result of me coming back into the vgm community posting more content interviews all kinds of stuff and then realizing that game lark and game grooves need to be separate in terms of names and i already had the name game grooves because one of my many times that i was like dabbling uh in the vgm community on my hiatus shall we call it um I had created a Twitter account for this because I had this whole plan that didn't work out. But the bottom line is I had the name Game Grooves already ready to go. Um, so uh, at that point, I didn't have any plans for creating albums. I strictly wanted to create a website that I could be proud of. Um, I believe I revamped it a little bit. Uh, you see the aesthetic there is today. However, <laughs> spoiler alert, that's going to change soon very soon hopefully um and so game grew started you know i had stayed in touch with all, all my friends in the video video game music community so i had a rough idea of what was going on but i i reached out to people and you know started posting articles and, and the ball started rolling again and then right around to january 2020 um i reached out to hashel from pixel mixers and said hey i would like to get back into making music but i don't know if i really want to you know handle all the logistics of like splits and stuff and try to make a record label so let's just do a charity album would you be interested and of course uh he graciously accepted my offer and we have heroes um to as a result the very first game Gears album uh heroes which is a tribute um to video game music and it featured artists from pixel mixers but i kind of helped produce it um, and after that, I had another idea of these elements where I would basically be creating kind of like sub brands beneath Game Grooves music for each genre. Um, and I'm still trying to figure out the best way to, to organize that. But the first album was called Elements for that reason. And it ended up being six elements, um, which I won't go through here because I've already spent too much time talking. In any case, you know, we got the ball rolling from there. And... With Game Groove's music, I just realized I'm going to be operating at a loss for a long time. So I need to cut costs as much as I can, you know, do the bare minimum as far as, um, like, I've got to do my own, all my own marketing, all my, <laughs> do everything that I can afford to do myself. So mastering, I can't do myself. Artwork, I can't do myself. And licensing, obviously, I need to pay to do the correct licensing. But other than that, you know, any kind of marketing, I'm not paying for Facebook or Twitter ads anymore. That kind of stuff. Um, I will say I have used Scarlet Moon um, Productions, Jason Napolitano, for Scario Kart. So I've been strategic about when I pay for marketing and PR. Um, and of course, Jason does a great job. 
and I would love to work with them more, but, <laughs> you know, again, trying to be smart about how I um, spend money as far as creating a sustainable future for game groups. So, you know, we continue making albums. I, I kind of came up with a philosophy of, you know, you've seen it from last year with Link-182, uh, you know, trying to do game cover albums with a twist, right? There's some kind of flavor to it, uh, whether that's like a folk tribute to Banjo-Kazooie or Scario Kart, which is our most successful album to date. So, Gangers music is probably pretty self-explanatory, right? We, we create albums, um, some of them are compilation, uh, or all of them are compilation. Some of them might be a little more focused with fewer artists. Um, there's going to be more exciting things coming out from there, for sure. Some some newer things. Um, and then, you know, Game Gurus, let's see, Game Gurus Gazette was the website, which has been there forever. Um, and lastly, we have Game Gurus Uncovered. And that's its own story as well, which I know at this point you're like, how many stories do you have to tell? I have a lot of stories to tell. I'm skipping over quite a bit in this whole process. Um, let me just say also with Gang Gersh Music, I am eternally indebted to all the artists on those albums and specifically the producers that helped create them because, you know, we created um, Cry of the Planet as a response to what was happening with the George Floyd protests and then we created her theme with Samothis as producer, we created uh, Rainbow Rose with Kane White as producer, and we created Select Adventure with um, Rahul as producer. And I'm immensely proud of all those albums because charity albums, it, it is literally like a, uh, it, it's just a passion project, pure and simple. Like no one is getting anything in return for doing these things, right? It's all just trying to raise awareness for these artists and for these causes, and I will continue to do that for sure in the future. But back to Game Gears Uncovered, um, I had done, you know, interviews before with GameLark, but I didn't really have the time to do them with Game Grooves. And then somehow, I don't know how, I don't remember how, um, Peter Gillette reached out to me and, and talked about doing some kind of podcast. Um, Peter... I knew from his documentary on video game music called From Cards to Hearts, and I thought, sure, this seems like a good partnership. You know, I just basically told him, you can do what you want, interview who you want, gave him a lot of freedom, um, and we created Game Gears Uncovered. And I, of course, um, commissioned Don Corgi, who is my, you know, go-to person as far as logos, to create a Game Gears Uncovered logo, because I love logos. I think we're up to 12 or 13 variations of the Game Gurus logo at this point. Um, and so Peter did that for a while. And then I kind of stepped in and helped here and there. But we both kind of we both kind of fell into different projects and Game Gurus Uncovered was on hiatus for a while. We had ideas for a comeback, but they just never panned out. And so last summer, last August, I was no last July, I was um I was sitting with Ro Panaganti at a beautiful barbecue place in Raleigh, North Carolina. I was on the way to visit some friends, and I stopped in Raleigh to, to get lunch with Ro on a very long drive. And Ro and I were talking, and so the I, you know the game crews uncovered came up, and he was like, "Yeah, what you, what's going on with that?" I was like, oh, "I don't know, man. You know, Peter and I are just busy. You know, life stuff, two kids, a cat, <laughs> whatever." And Ro was like, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I think I could do something with that. I was like, you, you want to take over Game Girls Uncovered? Yeah, sure, okay. So I told him run with it, right? You know, I'm, sure, produce whatever content you want. So um, Ro Panagonti took over Game Girls Uncovered, and the rest is history. I think he's done a fantastic job as a podcast host. He brings a very valuable and unique perspective to that podcast much different than Peter or I could provide because I think you know Peter and I both see ourselves as kind of a part of the VGM community but not necessarily like a VGM artist so we we have different perspectives on how things are done and what what challenges these artists are facing and how to overcome these challenges so Ro I think kind of, kind of speak the same language um, as a lot of the guests that he has uh, so that's where we are today. You know, you have Gangers Music, which is the record label, and we release, you know, video game cover albums roughly once a month, give or take. 
We have Game Gears Gazette, um, which is a website. It's a hub for video game cover artists to find new music, to find tips and guides. Um, we have the Game Gears album challenge going on, which challenges people to create a five-track EP in a year, and that's been going really well. We have almost 30 people that signed up for that. Um, and we have a lot more coming. And we have Game Gears Uncovered, which Ro is continuing to run, and it is... Like I said, every episode is a real treat to listen to, and I think he's done a fantastic job. And we have one more thing coming, which I can't talk about. One more major Game Grooves initiative, let's call it, um, that in a few weeks you'll find out about. Uh, today's March 15th, so you'll find out in a few weeks. Um, but that covers where how we got here. I guess, where do we go from here? Um, how is Game Grooves doing? You know, Am I going to have to... Stop doing it because I have another kid. No, we're not. I'm not having any more kids. Two is enough. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I, I guess as far as the business side of things, I could talk about a little bit. Last year, I created an LLC for Game Gears because I realized that if I wanted to make Game Gears sustainable, I needed to treat it as a business in terms of you know money and taxes and all that. So, um, I've taken a lot of steps to make it sustainable. And to be fully upfront about Game Grooves and where I see it going, <laughs> there's there's a basically an unwritten rule for for um, LLCs and, and businesses that you need to be profitable within three years, right? Essentially, when you're doing taxes, you have to prove that you have a business that is making money and you intend to make money. Otherwise, you can't write it off really at a certain point. The IRS is going to come come after you and say, well, is this a hobby or is this a business, right? So I've given myself that three years to try and make Game Group sustainable. And we're working there. We, we've definitely come pretty far within a year. We're not there yet, um, but I'm confident that we can. And at that three-year point, if it if it isn't sustainable, then I will continue to do Game Grooves in different fashion. We'll still continue to make albums, but probably not at the same rate. But we've got a whole year and what's to this March nine months before that has to that decision has to be made and with your support I think that we can easily make game Gears sustainable and then some so I have plenty of plans for game Gears, no matter what happens no matter you know the whatever the circumstances are um and I'm constantly inspired and impressed by this community um I missed magfest this past year I hope to make it out next year and yeah, the, the future is bright for sure. There's a lot of things coming. Um, if you've watched this whole video, thank you so much. If you want to know anything else about Game Grooves or how we're doing things or, you know, what 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 kind of... If you have suggestions for things you'd like to see, types of content, um, I do want to quickly mention there's so many things... I didn't write this out, so I'm just going off the, you know, off the cuff, so to speak. I also want to mention that as far as the Gazette goes, I, I don't know how, <laughs> again, I'm old, I don't remember exactly how, but um, we've had some fantastic guest writers, um, Michael Leopold Weber and uh, Chris Penwell are the two staff writers right now for Game Groups, and I'm, I'm, I always love getting articles from both of them. So that's the other part of the puzzle, piece of the puzzle is that with Game Gears Gazette, I, I like to occasionally commission articles, usually like once a month or so. Um, I just want to make sure I give a shout out to them as well because they're instrumental um, in making Game Gears what it is. So, you know what I always say, right? Stay safe, stay healthy, stay beautiful because it's a crazy world we live in and video game music is uh, something that brings us all together and at least for me, makes me happy and I want to keep doing this for as long as I can. So... I hope you stick around, and I hope that you are enjoying what Game Gears has offered so far. And yeah, here's to 2022. Take care.